I have this, you know, uh, cargo ship of a canoe that uh, that transports all four of us. And uh, right now it doesn't fit in the bed of my truck, so to transport around, it just it's just too long. Even with an extender, I can put in the you know the the hitch. It's just not uh, not enough to transport it safely. So I have this 12 foot utility trailer, and uh, been transporting it with this. It works out well. We go camping, take the canoe. We can put the bikes on the trailer, and uh, you know and head to, head to it. But what happens is on these utility tra trailers when you have the canoe turned over it gets pretty low to the ground kind of right here in the back and I have uh, inadvertently in the past kind of scraped the the bow of the canoe and it's stick, sticking over the edge there what I've done <laughs> I went from nothing to just stacking some pallets on here to building this kind of a frame and like anything that starts off temporary um, thinking I'm just gonna it'll work for now just to get me to the campsite I gotta I gotta leave I gotta get there um, it turns into semi-permanent, so we've been using it for a while. And actually on this last camping trip, it uh, broke apart on the way home. So that was an adventure. Um, you know, uh, going 60 miles an hour and seeing the canoe just kind of slump down in your rearview mirror. So <laughs> pull over, kind of get it fixed up to get home. But now I think it's time to uh, to build something a little bit more permanent. Not not just, you know, transport help me transport the canoe, but also can act as some storage for you know, life jackets and paddles, things like that, so it don't have to throw that in the in the bed of the truck. It's just all here on the trailer, and I can just, uh, you know, throw it in here and go. So uh, basically, I'm going to be building a square uh, with some part of it, the bottom part that kind of sticks out the front. It'll kind of make sense once I start building it. But what my plan is to basically use some five-quarter boards to build a box that uh, just open bottom that I'll just set on the trailer an open top and it'll have some notches out here that I'll lay in, you know, the paddles will kind of lay on the top and make basically the lid for the box. The The box is going to be to house all of our life jackets and other kind of odds and ends that would tend to want to fly out of the bed of the truck and stuff that are kind of a hassle to, uh, to control. So if I put it in this and then put the paddles on top, maybe a bungee cord over the paddles to hold it down and that'll be the lid. And then this back part will have a two by four going across and that's what the canoe will rest on. This is kind of what I'm thinking. I'm gonna start cutting some boards up. All this will be pressure treated two by four and five quarter boards. And uh, so let's get, get to measuring and cutting. All right, so this is going to be the back piece. If you can kind of envision the canoe is going to sit in here. These are going to keep it from sliding side to side. This is the back part of the box. So some, something like that. I'm going to get this all squared up, screw it into place. I think the next step, I may actually build the bottom on the sides here first. I'm just going to go ahead and cut those pieces long, screw them into the outer side here on both ends, and then I'll... Uh, uh, do the front part of the, the box, I think, next. Well, I have the front and back piece kind of just sitting up there temporarily while I kind of brainstorm. So one paddle, two paddles. These are my little ones for my kids. It's made from some one by fours and a pallet wood, but they are not going to fit. I don't want to cut a big notch because they'll, they're actually starting to outgrow these. I need to get them real paddles. It's interesting that they sit up like that. What I'm thinking is just cut a little notch and then when a bungee cord comes over the top that'll keep them down and keep them from sliding back and forth. Uh, 
so hopefully that won't happen when it's all screwed together. But here, I'm thinking keeping them like that wide, whatever spacing that comes out to be. I, don't, I know we need at least four, but maybe maybe have a place for a fifth, just in case uh, you know we got some friends coming or something. Maybe something like that. Maybe so I can have six, make it a nice, you know, even number. So maybe I'll measure that, and then I'm going to um, cut out the. I think I'm going to use a hole saw and just cut out a portion of it. So let's. Anyway, I'm going to take some measurements and then bring you along, and I'll get up on the uh, on the workbench, and we will uh, take it from there. Here I've got the, the the front and the back pieces, and I've got my drill press here with uh, it's an inch and five eighths hole saw, and I'm going to try to attempt to cut just half or a little maybe more than half of the uh, the hole saw diameter. So I have the center drill bit of the hole saw right at the edge of the the piece, maybe a little bit in to where the drill bit is completely on the piece actually, and then I'm going to go down with it with the uh, with the drill press here. So I'm not too confident I've actually never used this drill press. Uh, something we picked up at a estate sale, so we'll see how it goes. But it doesn't look like it has enough stroke in the drill press to get through both pieces. I've uh, clamped them both here. So what we're going to do is drill as far as I can, and I think it'll kind of etch into the second piece. And we'll do this for the whole top piece, take it off, and then maybe raise the bottom piece and then finish it off. So we'll see what... We'll see what this uh what this does here. Okay. It looks like it went all the way through and it was biting into the second one. So there's the first hole cut in, the first notch cut in. So now I'm gonna go down the line. I basically have them every six inches. And kind of offset maybe I think it was four inches from the end so uh, I well I'll spare you the rest of these but I'm just gonna cut the rest of these notches and then we'll come back in uh, when I'm about to attach them So I think I'm gonna put the, I was thinking of putting the bungee cords, you know, right over this part, which I think would look nice. But I think you get better coverage, especially if I just have two paddles. I do something like this, and another one like this. Something like that, that way it'll keep stuff from flying out more, more better, <laughs> if that's the word. All right, so I'm going to just put some screws on the outside edge that these hooks will hook into. Nothing super tight. Right, so we're just gonna eyeball these. Not quite as official. Okay, I think that's all the building will do. Hmm. If you go over a crazy bump, you might bust it. I have to make it a little tighter. serious bumps if they come out. Right. I think that's got it. What I think I might do is just try this out one time, see how if those paddles will bounce out. 
and then if they do, maybe just add a third um, bungee cord over it that's maybe just a little bit tighter. Or what I could do on the bungee cords is cut cut the sides down so they're pulling down on the on the uh, the paddles. Or maybe just put the paddles on the outer edges. Give it a little bit of yeah, a little more downforce on it, maybe. Something like that. Anyway, all right. Well, I'm going to uh, get this out of here and see if we can can load it up and show you what it how it looks. Here it is on the trailer, put together, kind of some equipment mocked up here. I got the canoe propped up, but uh, this gives you an idea of what it all looks like. Life jackets in there. Uh, eventually we could put some other stuff in there. There's a lot of room left. And then, you know, the front have the battery and the battery charger. There's, there's room there for, you know, wood, uh, for firewood, you know, for camping, stuff like that. It just keeps it corralled so it's not bouncing all over the trailer. But I think it's doing pretty good. I'm going to lower it here in a minute so you get to see the profile. But everything fits in there pretty nice. All right, let me, uh, let me lower this down real quick. You can see how nice and a slim profile that is. You know, all that wasted space under the under the canoe when it was propped up is now used up by all this equipment. I hope you can get a good idea, but it's nice and tied up in there. I appreciate you guys sticking around for this video. Um, if you would subscribe to this channel, like this video, really helps me out. Thank you.